All right, ladies and gents, welcome, welcome. And I'm so excited to say that this crazy map of Sokotra is actually back in the map pool. I think it was a month ago, month and a half ago, there was the uh, smart, strong, and fun player, if you recall, who went for Cummins and Rams, and we had that Feudal Age versus Imp game. Anyways, lots of crazy games because players are really close together and anything goes on Sokotra. Here in the blue, around 700 ELO, we have Richard. And here in the red, we have uh, Winnipeg Pride. Okay? So Winnipeg versus Richard. Interesting names. Interesting ELO. Berbers are a fun sieve. I, I think it's such a great sieve to learn with as well. You've got the faster villagers, cheaper knights, cheaper camels. Plus, you've got camel archers if you want to out of the castle. That's exciting. And then for uh, the Cummins, at least the main thing we've seen from the Cummins is you can build a second TC in Feudal. But you also can make Siege and you also can make Rams. Now, this is a unique start for both, because normally you have one or two villagers build the houses, and then you go back to resources, but Richard's like, we want two houses here next to our gold, and we also want two houses next to our stone. And so we're two minutes in, and these villagers haven't really been helping out with any food income. Over on this side, a bit better in the way of food income for red. And Red has gone for the sneakiest lumber camp ever. <laughs> it's so cute. Hey, if I was chopping wood at a time of war, I would be pretty... I would be scared as well. And they, I'm sure they've heard that the enemy's out there. I'm sure they've heard the enemy can make two TCs. They're all freaking out about it. Like, what? We can't do that. Oh, no. The enemy is more advanced than us. This guy's still not working. I'm pretty sure he was a house villager. He just looks like a guy who's lazy. Come on, man. Go do your job. But okay. Uh, let's talk about Socotra and how it works again. So most maps will have two boars, or in this case, there's an elephant. You only have one. You've got a bunch of goats, as you can see. And then you've got a group of zebra. I'd highly recommend planning on building a mill next to the zebra. Because otherwise, it's going to be a little complicated for you. Some players could just push in the zebra. Higher elo will do that, but with this elo, it might, might be worth making a mill there. Richard has definitely struggled with Dark Age execution. Let's see how Richard does with this elephant. Okay, bringing in the elephant. So far, so good. This should be an easy kill for Richard. Well played, Richard. That's very well done. As he ends up bringing the scout home. What's funny is, when Richard went to scout the enemy, he saw the house, but he didn't see the lumber camp. So the sneakiness of the lumber camp has paid off for Red. Who has also been scouting, but hasn't scouted the berries somehow. And now is looking and is like, what do we do? And now is going after the elephant, but is only going after the elephant with one vill. Now the other vills get the memo. Um, okay. Well, I mean, hey, if you have fast villagers with Berbers, this ends up working out. Lady, run towards your friends. Okay, Garrison. Wow, well played. Okay. A little scrappy here for both players. Okay, back to Blue's Eco. Red Scout is running right underneath the TC. And we have a Garrison, not a town bell, from Mr. Richard Bog 59 I'd like to think that Richard Bog 59 was born in the year 59. I'm not sure how old that would make him. But people of all ages play Age of Empires 2, which is freaking cool. And uh, I'd, like, I'd just like to imagine that you've got an Age of Empires family out there, you know? His son gets home from school. He's like, hey, let me tell you about the Socotra game I played earlier, you know? <laughs> That'd be a fun dynamic. He's 62. Okay, he's, his son probably didn't get home from school then. Oh, he's pushing in the zebra too. Okay, big rich. Boom, shoot it. Bam. Okay, all right, that works. 62. Maybe it's, maybe it's grandson at that age. I don't know. I don't know Richard's life. Okay, he's going to go to Barry's now. And, and Winnipeg Pride just hasn't used the wood. So, so I always talk about efficient wood chopping. And that's important. But if you've got seven on wood, you better be planning to spend that. Making farms, making a second mill, maybe. And we're going to see a barracks now for red. Right smack dab in the middle of the map. And, oh, please don't try and full wall. 
Please don't try and full wall. That's so much walling. Okay. Richard seems to have a better idea of normal eco layout. Um, you can see there's a better balance here. Red isn't a very balanced person. So I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend a tightrope anytime soon to Winnipeg Pride. But there's options for Winnipeg Pride after barracks. We could see militia possibly. But to me, it looks like Red is now terrified because the scout's dead and you you're always afraid the enemy is more aggressive than you. So I think red is scouting so red can wall. And blue, of course, doesn't really see this. But again, my suggestion for most elos would be just make a mill here. Pushing in is fine, and it looks like Rich has done a good job. But you could be scouting, and I think that it would be more efficient to just spend 100 wood and drop the mill. But maybe he's also trying to practice and be one of the pros. Obviously, I'm really focused on uh, WWC right now. And Wondering Warriors Cup has been immensely entertaining. But there also is going to be Masters of Socotra up right after that in February. And I'm excited to cast some of those games. I also have to sign up for that tourney. And at a high level, it's so lamey. Like, villagers are killing the zebras and stealing the elephants. And you have villager fighting in Dark Age. The fact it's close quarters just makes everything so ridiculous. All right. Okay, so Red's on the way up. It almost looks like Red wants to go for a second TC. But Red can't do that with Berbers. <laughs> Red hasn't scouted this because the scout died. But doesn't realize that maybe continuing this way with walls would make sense here. But overall, I don't mind a player walling up the play safe. Overall, I don't mind it. It hasn't been punished at all. Blue doesn't even know. Richard's on gold. Richard's on a little bit of everything right now, but I'm not sure what Richard will be able to afford in the next stage. Hmm. Reverend, what's up, man? He says, I know there are a ton of things going on, but I think that many people would like to see another Regicide Rumble now that there's spec chat. Hmm. Well, if only I was planning on announcing something right after this tournament that's going on right now. Nah, I would... T90 announced up? No. No, I'm sorry. I don't I don't mean to get your hopes up. That doesn't sound like me. Okay, now Red realizes, well, there is actually the edge of the map here, so let's wall. And okay, not the end of the world for Red. So it's just kind of play safe, not take the zebra, because who needs that? And uh hope for the best, I guess, if you're red. Hmm. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Also, Gaio, thank you very much for that sub. A couple minutes ago. Double archer range for Richard. Not what I was expecting to see. Richard's number one problem right now is that he hasn't been using his scout. A feudal age scout can always kill a villager one-on-one. -on -one. Early feudal age, if you're looking to be aggressive, you need to use that scout. Stop wall villagers, that's the most important thing, but also see what they're up to. We have zero eco upgrades for red, except for wheelbarrow, which is now on the way. But no wood or farm upgrade, which is fascinating. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with both of them because they are at 700 elo. I feel like Richard has more of a plan, but Richard might be slightly worse at executing. And then red doesn't really have a solid game plan, but maybe a little better at executing. I don't know. Jeebus is... How do you know if someone subbed? I cannot seem to get a message out there. It, it just shows up on my alert box. There's no... um. So, like, you're already subscribed, right? And so I, I, I have not yet determined how the two months work because I don't think you click a button for it. I think when you're on the stream and it's been two months, it shows up for you. But honestly, right now, my alerts are a little glitched because it's not tied in the way I it should be, so... I should have more information on that soon. I unfortunately, like, I worked with Overlay Guy for so long, but he's really busy with a new job. And so I'm trying not to be pressury about getting a few of these things sorted, but I think I'm going to have to go a different direction and, and find somebody else here shortly. Because <laughs> we've had, or at least for the time being, because there's a couple of these things I want to get in a, in a better situation for you guys. Ah, this is Roy from the old days. What's up, man? I see you. Thanks for sticking around. 
Yeah, also guys, if you are out there and you really, really, really don't want to interact in your first last name, you can make a page like Deadly Cookies done, for example. Uh, I, I pinned a link, uh, T90 Official TV. It kind of shows how to do that if you want to. Wow, this is fascinating. So Archer Army's coming in here, and Red's first reaction is to tower the very backside. And <laughs> is Blue going to go that way? Okay, you know, it's not a bad tower. He probably thinks he wants to protect his golden stone. But the fact that these vills are so exposed and he's just like, yeah, they're fine. It's so funny to me. Yeah, it's pretty easy to make a page and Facebook's been better with, with thinking the pages are spam. Better, of course. Yeah, Julian, you can't subscribe from the pages right now. So basically, if you still wanted to sub and interact with a badge, you'd use your, your you know, your normal account. Uh... But you could always subscribe to support and then just interact on your page. So, um, anywho, this is interesting because Blue has broken in to attack the barracks, which is something that Blue could have accomplished from outside the walls, <laughs> right? He's attacking a building with a ranged unit that he, he could have done the exact same thing without breaking in. So I'm not sure I like that, but maybe he's thinking, well, I've got military now. We're going to force this guy to do something, which is true. And now he's going to add the second TC. And since he's got the second TC, he is is going to add more villagers out of that eventually once it's finished. And he does see that Red has a stable. Now, he hasn't really reacted. Like, you could think, oh, my God, he's going to make scouts. Let's make spearmen. But... Maybe it's this long-term plan from Blue to take out the barracks from Red so Red can't make Spearman later against his scouts. Ho oh ho! Who knows? Red is pretty housed at the moment. Red's adding the houses, though. Economy's looking much better for both players right now. And unfortunately for Blue, I think he must have right-clicked this. I think he right-clicked the barracks, and if that's the case, these scouts with upgrades are going to completely mop him up. Hmm. Yeah, if, you're, if your page hasn't been active for a decent time, you might as well just make a new one at this point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it sucks. That's the one thing that... So there's changes that I'm told are coming soon, but I don't know specifics, of course. But that's the one thing that's really sucked, is that like everything else I knew about, but I also made the website to encourage you guys to be able to interact with, your, with whatever names you wanted, right? And I even knew... You know, because I, I made the switch with worst-case scenarios in mind, right? So I made the switch not expecting any changes. That way, if changes come, it, it's, it, you know, it's, it's just better at that point. I did not make the change on any promises that things would change. That makes sense. Anyways, um, but yeah, I knew that you could use different names, and I used, knew that you could, guys could interact as you did on Twitch, and I just didn't know the page thing would be a headache. Uh as it has been so far. So I, I think it's been a lot better the last few weeks because I've seen a lot less people talking about it. But maybe people, I think what it is, is a lot of you guys are just like, ah, whatever. <laughs> I'm used to it by now, so. The Android app is a joke? I actually love, I, I love the app on, um, on Apple. Like on my iPhone, I, I think the app is fine. The Facebook gaming app is really good for me. I don't know uh, if maybe Android's being neglected. So guys, I, as a general rule, I talk about this a lot. If you make military, you want to get some value from it. But on Socotra, controlling the middle of the map, controlling the map is some level of value. So I don't necessarily hate how Richard's played this. Now what I'd love to see from Red is I'd love to see maybe a second or third stable. You have lots of resources. So regardless of the civilization... You could make more units here, but then you're Berbers, so you have cheaper stable units. Hmm. So we'll see a second and third stable eventually, maybe? Maybe Red will think about it later. But I foresee the light cab upgrade coming in. My concern right now for Blue is, and, and I guess you could say the same for Red, but Red's got a little bit more, is what's your gold plan here? He will have the Vill lead because he's producing out of two TCs. But you are going to need access to more gold in this game. First thing you should do in Castle Age. First thing you should do is upgrade the units you have. Your red light cab would be great. He's actually going to make camels! 
Camels, FYI, do not counter archers. They counter knights. So he's going to learn his lesson. Maybe he misclicked. Maybe he needs a few houses. He's under pressure. He's about to lose his second or third house to freaking archers here. Crossbow's on the way for blue. Love to see it. He's also added one step lancer. I just love to see Bodkin next. And Red's thinking, what I really need now is that. A siege workshop. I really wish there was data on how much damage this group of, of crossbows has done to, uh, to buildings. I don't know if I've ever seen someone just sit there attacking buildings for as long as Blue has right now. And the difference is, Blue is spending his resources on army constantly. He might not be getting upgrades, but he's making a lot of army. And Red is under pressure and has just been super casual about it. Like, okay, I guess we'll just make some houses now. Like, okay, we can delay the siege workshop. That's not Socotra, people. If you want to relax and chill out, you should be playing a different map. Because this is the map of pressure. This is the map of military. And it's not like he hasn't had time, right? He's been given the time, but he's just... He's a lot more relaxed and mellow than I would be in this situation. Camel, they have bonus damage against knights or anything really on a horse, okay? But they lack pierce armor, so they're really weak against archers for that reason. And they lack attack, so they're pretty weak against anything that's not on a horse. It's all bonus damage with them. They got six attack. Knights got ten attack plus extra armor. I don't know if there's a difference between the attack speed of camels and knights. But anyways, those are the big things. You kind of respect Red's gold veins though. Right? It's like... It's, it's almost like Red has a plan, you know? <laughs> like... He's just so casual about this right now. I... I... <laughs> I, I still am so surprised. And Blue won't even move, man. Blue is, is, I think, focusing on the economy, which is fine. But Blue won't even run in. Red, just in case, I guess, is going to make more houses. There we go. There's a little bit more action. So that will force any pressure in towards the TC. So that's nice. And now he's adding Siege. Okay, and now we get to see how Blue reacts to this. Maybe what Red was thinking was this. I'm going to have Siege to hit those crossbows. The enemy's natural move would be to add Cav to take my siege. And then I will have counter to the Cav in the camels. Maybe that was his thought process. By the way, I think Blue is going to drop a castle soon. I don't know if it'll be forward. The perfect castle would be here. This is all about to come to a conclusion soon. Yes, okay. I don't know which villagers are coming forward yet. But it can't be many because there's not many moving. Here comes the siege, here comes the scouts, here comes the camels. And all the blues units are going to prioritize the melee. You now have the siege hitting, but the siege is going uphill. And you've got camels. Not good. Not good for red. If those were knights with the siege, I think he clears that, my friends. I think he clears that. But in the... He clears it! He clears it! As I said, he clears it! And here comes Blue. Now it's Blue's turn to be casual. And he's just gonna drop a castle with one villager because he's like, I've got army. Also, Blue didn't have a single upgrade except for Fletching there, which is quite bad. Red's way ahead of him on upgrades. And now Red's gonna drop a castle. It's like it was all part of his freaking plan. What the... How can a player, especially a 700 Edel player, be so mellow... And so chill. And just be like, yeah, it's fine. It's almost like, you know how Viper's like, it's all part of the plan. After he loses like 20 million things and then ends up coming back. It's almost like red here. Like, oh yeah, I knew. Or it's like someone in uh, soccer or football or whatever. And they try and cross and they score instead. They're like, oh yeah, I definitely shot that. I knew. Wow. And now Blue's going to panic. Blue's going to panic. Which means he's going to make more mistakes. He's getting, he's making more units, and he's getting more upgrades, but he's sending the units out into camels. The upgrades that he's getting are very late, and it's very hard to make correct decisions when you're under this much pressure on Socotra. And now, of course, the camels look godlike. I mean, they're so cheap with Berbers, right? Second TC for him now. Blue will try and drop a castle behind here. 
Um, I, blue is honestly a little unlucky this game. Because I think the way most of the golds positioned were better for red. Like, this was really good. He had more gold in a safe position than blue did. And he's got gold over here. And if you look at blue, blue's going to add a TC to protect this one. But I think two of these golds were supposed to be his, if not one of them. So I, I will cut blue some slack when it comes to that. But not getting Bodkin arrow was so bad. And also not even having a single upgrade. Not bloodlines, not armor, not attack on the step lancers. Okay. Very good castle for blue to kind of stop this from getting any worse. And now we have to see what the players do next. So if you've got forward castle versus forward castle, the first thought should be Imperial Age. And if you cannot do that, your next thought is they might be able to. So make freaking everything you can with your resources and make rams. And also get blacksmith upgrades. Spend your resources. Because if they're imping, they will be putting 1,000 food and 800 gold into imp. So what you need to do is you need to put whatever resources you have in the military to push that back. And Kumans do get capped ram, which is normally an Imperial Age thing, right? But I think it is possible for Blue that he might be able to go Pike Ram Push. And Pike Ram Push would be the go-to right now. At least he's got an attack upgrade now. But I, I just don't see him committing heavily to Pikemen. It seems more like Step Lancers. And Step Lancers are crap against Camels. Step Lancers are also crap against Castles. Step Lancers are very, very situational. The situations where you can use them is if you can micro a lot with them. Um, and also probably, like, maybe with a mix with Knights at times. Just because the way they attack is from one tile away. Guys, would it benefit people if I made a video on Ram pushing in Castle Age? I mean, all my low elo videos are kind of like that. We talk about it a lot. But it really feels like it's a common thing for people. When they get stressed out due to an enemy castle, they'll always add one Ram or two Rams. There's never a lot of that five Ram stuff, I suggest. There goes red. Maybe... We're, we're trying to mix in some other stuff. Keyword trying because uh, I stream a lot and record a lot of videos and all that. But uh, we're going to get there and I, I'll put that on the list maybe. Straggler tree video. <laughs> well, okay. If you're red, you can see what he's making. You just saw the pikes. So what you don't want to do is die to pikemen. So you're going to add archer units now. And he's doing that. He's making genitors. I was wondering if he'd make genitors. Genitors are a mounted skirm you can only make with Berbers. All right. So yeah, I mean, he's gone up to imp. I think it's the perfect play. And probably for most of you, going up to imp is the perfect play from blue's position as well. Because I, your average player isn't going to be able to spend all these resources right away. But back when I said it a couple minutes ago, Blue needed all the blacksmith upgrades. He needed a bit more army. He needed a couple rams, and then he'd make his push. But now it's like tick-tock on the clock, and he's most likely going to go in with too little and have it be too late. Hmm. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> There's some amazing threads for people who might see this on YouTube. Um, basically, let's say someone says, Hi, I'm Jim. How are you? In chat, okay? And then someone wants to respond specifically to Jim. And they click reply. Uh, in the chat here on the live stream, it shows individual conversations with the replies. But on screen, it doesn't show that. Uh, which I actually, I actually like. Because occasionally, there'll just be like two or three people talking to each other. Like in Twitch chat. Two or three people talking to each other. And it would fill up all of chat. I actually like that change. Uh, but anyways, someone's talking about camels and hometowns and... Uh, it's funny. <laughs> and now, now Blue gets to panic. Or he doesn't get to panic. Like, it's some type of reward. Like, congratulations, you get to panic. No. Now Blue panics and he's like, uh, what do I do? And to be fair to him, he did back away here. Well, kind of. Okay. All right. Well, at least he didn't send all of his units into the gauntlet. So now he's being patient. But you see how he chose the Castle Age push approach. Didn't fully commit to it. 
And now he's going to try imp, and he's just behind, right? Red's going to have the ability to make traps. And then red can just trap down blue's buildings. Got to be careful with those camels, though. And oh, he got baited here, blue. He got baited into the castle fire by the camels. Red's looking real good right now. Yep. Here come the capped rams. You've got double castle. You've got melee units. You've got siege behind. Blue is panicked. And blue blue is doing uh, a strategy you guys probably know well. It's called click and hope. Guys, stop doing that. Now they're doing the whole comment thread with Jim. You're not named Jim. Well, you might be. I don't know. So I hope people learned from this game and not learned that camels are the most OP unit in the game, but learned that like specifically, I think on Socotra, invest into military and upgrades more, especially if you want to go for a one villager forward castle blue, you need to have a bit more in the way of attack, but also learned maybe how important patience can be. Now, Richard allowed Winnipeg pride to have patience because he didn't pressure beyond taking out houses and stables. He just kind of sat there. He didn't force any reactions at all from the opponent, but you know, Red has benefited from patience regardless of the situation. And Whoa, what the? What is this? Does Red know about this? I don't think Red knows about this. And... <laughs> okay, Blue just gives up anyways. I was really confused. <laughs> I guess... Well, he probably felt like there was nothing he could do. And so maybe he wanted to drop a castle in Red's base or something. Which would have been eventful. Obviously, Red's an imp and Red could probably make trebs, but GG. Wow, man. So, if this goes to YouTube, Richard's not going to enjoy this. But I need to go back. And I just, I want to show you guys on fast forward. Lose whole attack and what it accomplished, okay? Ready? Started at 16 minutes. The Great Archer Rush of 2022. Palisade wall down. Boom. Next to the barracks. Sorry, we are going as fast as possible. Okay, now he's taking out the barracks. Now next, after five minutes on the barracks, we now have a house. Which, funnily enough, actually pop caps red. Here we are 10 minutes later after the rush started. He's taken out a palisade wall, a house, and a barracks. He's now hoping to get his second and third house. Okay, there he goes. Second house. Third house. 15 minutes. He's taken out a couple houses, a barracks, and a palisade wall. <laughs> and now... <laughs> <laughs> now it dies. Oh, God. That's so sad. <laughs> Wait, so let's recap. Let's do the saddest recap of the day. Barracks. Palisade wall. Three houses? And I'm not sure we can, we can really say that weakening the stable is an accomplishment. But that's what he accomplished over 16 minutes with his rush. And then lost everything. Castle gets denied. And then Red ends up winning the game. Wow. 275 wood worth of damage before the fight. Okay, now let's even take the math further. 275 wood of damage done over 16 minutes. So someone do the math on that. How much wood is that a second? <laughs> or or a minute, or I don't know. Uh, okay, anyways, we should stop picking on poor Blue. He made a mistake. It's fine. I, it still could have been fine, right? If he got his upgrades a little bit more there. And then got that castle up. He could have taken the win, but. Oh, it was four houses. Give credit where credit is due. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, there was so much action that I just couldn't keep track of what was going on. That's what it was.